What if I told you that right now, as you're watching this video, Africa is quietly revolutionizing the automotive industry? I'm not talking about importing cars or assembling foreign brands. I'm talking about groundbreaking innovations like Zimbabwe's self-powered electric vehicle running entirely on radio waves. Yes, you heard that right. Cars powered by radio frequencies. No fuel, no batteries, just pure, unadulterated ingenuity. If that sounds impossible, stick around, because today we're diving deep into Africa's incredible automotive transformation, a story of resilience, creativity, and a continent rewriting the rules of mobility. And hey, if you're excited to explore more cutting-edge tech with us, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's free and it helps us bring you more mind-blowing content every week. Africa is churning out around 30,000 vehicles every single day. Let that sink in for a moment. That's over 10 million cars a year rolling off production lines from the bustling factories of Morocco in the north to the industrial hubs of South Africa down south. But these aren't just any cars. They're built with a purpose, designed specifically for African roads, African climates, and African lives. This isn't about mass-producing generic sedans. It's about crafting vehicles that resonate with the heartbeat of the continent. At the forefront of this revolution stands Maxwell Chikambuzo, a Zimbabwean inventor with a vision that defies conventional thinking. Back in 2009, Chikambuzo unveiled something extraordinary, the Micronic Energy Device. This isn't your average gadget. It's a technology that captures ambient radio frequencies from the air and converts them into usable electric energy. Fast forward to today, and he's taken that invention a step further, creating the world's first self-powered electric vehicle. Picture this, a car that doesn't need gas stations, doesn't rely on charging points, just a vehicle that powers itself as it drives, tapping into the invisible energy all around us. This isn't just a cool idea, it's a potential lifeline for millions across Africa. Fuel prices are sky high in many regions and electricity grids are patchy at best. A self-powered car could slash transportation costs, connect remote communities, and redefine what mobility means in places where traditional infrastructure falls short. But Chikambuzo's story is just one thread in a much larger tapestry. Countries like South Africa, Morocco, Nigeria, and Ghana are stepping up their automotive game, producing vehicles that are tough, practical, and innovative. Take Morocco, for example. In less than two decades, it's gone from having virtually no automotive industry to becoming Africa's largest car exporter. In 2023 alone, Morocco shipped 400,000 vehicles to Europe, fueled by strategic partnerships with global giants like Renault and Stellantis, and a relentless focus on building local expertise. South Africa's automotive sector employs over 100,000 people and contributes 4.3% to the nation's GDP. Nigeria and Ghana are emerging as hubs for affordable, locally assembled cars. This isn't about catching up to the rest of the world, it's about forging a path that's uniquely African. For decades, Africa was seen as little more than a dumping ground for second-hand cars from Europe and Asia, cast-offs that sputtered along until they gave out. But that narrative is dead. Today, Africa isn't just assembling foreign brands, it's innovating, designing, and producing vehicles that meet its own standards and needs. This shift is monumental, and here's why it matters. First. It's about economic empowerment. By building cars locally, African countries are creating jobs, hundreds of thousands of them. Factories need workers, supply chains need suppliers, and innovation needs engineers. In South Africa, the automotive industry isn't just a job creator, it's a lifeline for families and communities. Morocco's export boom has turned car manufacturing into a cornerstone of its economy, proving that Africa can compete on the global stage. Second, it's about relevance. African engineers know their continent better than anyone. They understand the realities of unpaved roads, scorching heat, and unpredictable fuel availability. They're not just designing luxury sports cars for smooth highways. They're building rugged, reliable vehicles that can handle the chaos of real life. Higher ground clearance, stronger suspensions, dust-resistant engines. These are the hallmarks of African automotive design. Finally, it's about pride. Africa's automotive revolution is a middle finger to the idea that the continent can't innovate. Maxwell Chikambuzo's self-powered car, Morocco's export dominance, Nigeria's growing assembly lines, these are stories of ambition and ingenuity. They're inspiring a new generation of African dreamers, from kids tinkering in garages to students studying engineering, all eager to leave their mark on the world. This isn't just an industry, it's a movement, and it's only getting started. Let's get practical for a second. What makes African-made cars different? It's not about flashy features or high-tech gimmicks, it's about solving real problems. African roads aren't always the pristine asphalt you see in car commercials. They're dirt tracks, pothole mazes, and flood-prone paths that would chew up a standard sedan in days. That's why African automakers prioritize durability over everything else. 
Stronger suspensions to absorb the jolts. Higher ground clearance to navigate rocky terrain. Dust resistant components to keep engines running in arid regions. These aren't optional extras, they're necessities. And it's not just about toughness, it's about versatility. In Africa, a vehicle often has to wear many hats. It might need to haul a farmer's crops to market in the morning, shuttle a dozen kids to school by noon, and carry supplies for a small business by night. That's why you see so many multi-purpose vehicles coming out of African factories. Vans, minibuses, trucks, built to do it all. Then there's the cost factor. Fuel is a luxury in many parts of Africa, and electricity isn't guaranteed. A gallon of gas can cost more than a day's wages, and charging an electric vehicle is a pipe dream in areas without reliable power. That's where innovations like Chikambutsu's self-powered car shine. By eliminating the need for fuel or charging stations, it's not just a technological marvel, it's a practical answer to a pressing problem. Sure, it's not on every street corner yet, and skeptics question whether radio waves can generate enough juice to power a full-sized car, but even as a proof of concept, it's a game changer. It's a glimpse into the future where mobility isn't a privilege, it's a right. Across the continent, this focus on real-world needs is everywhere. In Ghana, companies like Kantanka are producing affordable SUVs built for rural roads. In South Africa, manufacturers tweak designs to handle everything from urban sprawl to coastal humidity. This isn't innovation for innovation's sake, it's innovation with a purpose. Building a car isn't a solo act, it's a team sport. From the steel workers forging the chassis to the coders programming the electronics, every vehicle is the result of countless hands working together. In Africa, this collaboration is the secret sauce behind the automotive boom. Local supply chains are the backbone of this ecosystem. African automakers don't just import everything. They source steel from Kenyan mills, tires from Egyptian factories, and upholstery from Nigerian workshops. This keeps costs down, sure, but it does something even more important. It spreads the wealth. Small businesses, often family-run or youth-led, thrive by supplying parts and services. A tire maker in Cairo might employ a dozen people who, in turn, support their families. A fabric shop in Lagos could grow from a side hustle to a full-fledged supplier. Multiply that by thousands, and you've got an economic ripple effect that lifts entire communities. But collaboration goes beyond parts. It's about knowledge, too. Universities and tech institutes across Africa are partnering with automakers to refine designs, test materials, and train the next generation of engineers. In Zimbabwe, Chikambuso's team works with local electronics experts to perfect the micronic energy device. In South Africa, universities collaborate with global brands to ensure export-ready quality. This synergy between industry, academia, and local talent is what gives Africa's automotive revolution its staying power. And it's not just local. International partnerships are key, too. Morocco's rise as an export giant came from teaming up with companies like Renault, who brought expertise and investment. South Africa's factories build BMWs and Toyotas alongside homegrown designs. These collaborations aren't about dependence, they're about leveraging global know-how to amplify African innovation. Africa stands at a crossroads. On one hand, it could follow the old path of fossil fuel dependence, pumping out gas guzzlers like the industrialized world did for decades. On the other, it has a chance to leapfrog the mess entirely and embrace a cleaner, greener future. Spoiler alert, it's choosing the latter. Electric vehicles, EVs, are popping up across the continent, and they're not just imports. Kenya's rolling out charging stations powered by geothermal energy. Uganda's Kira Motors has built a solar-powered bus that harnesses the country's abundant sunlight. Nigeria is tinking with biofuels made from local crops like cassava, cutting reliance on imported oil. These aren't one-off experiments, they're part of a broader push towards sustainable mobility. But Maxwell Chikabuzo's self-powered car takes the cake. By tapping into radio waves, an ever-present resource, it sidesteps the need for batteries, chargers, or fuel pumps. No mining for lithium, no coal plants to power it, just a car that runs on the energy already floating around us. Is it perfect? Not yet. And critics argue that radio waves don't pack enough punch to scale up. And without hard data, it's tough to say how viable it is. But here's the thing. Even if it's not ready for prime time, it's a bold, crazy, brilliant idea. And in a continent where necessity breeds invention, that's exactly the kind of thinking that could spark a revolution. Sustainability isn't just a buzzword here. It's a survival strategy. Africa's population is booming, its cities are growing, and its resources are finite. By betting on green tech now, the continent isn't just saving the planet, it's future-proofing its economy. Let's not kid ourselves, Africa's automotive revolution isn't all smooth sailing. There are hurdles, big ones, and they're not going away overnight. Supply chain disruptions are a headache. Global shipping delays, like those we saw during the pandemic, can grind production to a halt. A factory in Johannesburg might be waiting on parts from Asia while a deadline looms. Infrastructure's another pain point. 
Unreliable power grids mean blackouts that stall assembly lines. Rough roads make it tough to transport finished vehicles, and don't get me started on regulations. Every country has its own rules, from safety standards to import taxes, turning cross-border trade into a bureaucratic maze. Then there's the skepticism. Chikambuto's self-powered car, plenty of folks call it too good to be true. Without peer-reviewed studies or independent tests, it's hard to silence the doubters. Is it a scam, a pipe dream, or just ahead of its time? We don't have all the answers yet, but the questions aren't stopping progress. They're driving it. African entrepreneurs and governments are tackling these challenges head on. Morocco is building better ports to streamline exports. South Africa is investing in renewable energy to keep factories humming. Zimbabwe's Chikambuzo keeps tinkering, undeterred by the naysayers. It's not easy, but it's happening. The future is bright, it's just going to take some grit to get there. While Africa's rewriting ground mobility, China's taking to the skies. Meet the Xpeng X2, a flying car that's not just a prototype, but a real functioning vehicle. This octocopter, with eight motors for safety and stability, can take off vertically from a rooftop or street. It's got a 25-minute flight time, autonomous navigation powered by AI, and a sleek design that screams sci-fi blockbuster. Why bring this up? Because innovation is a global game, and Africa's revolution is part of a bigger wave. From radio-powered cars to flying taxis, the future of transportation is being reimagined, and Africa's right in the mix. Whether it's a self-powered car in Zimbabwe or a flying vehicle in China, these breakthroughs share a common thread. They're solving real problems with bold, outside-the-box thinking. Africa's automotive revolution isn't just about building cars. It's about building a future where mobility is affordable, sustainable, and tailored to the people who need it most. For the rest of the world, it's a wake-up call. Innovation doesn't have a single zip code. It's happening in Herrera, Lagos, and Casablanca, just as much as in Silicon Valley or Shanghai. The ideas coming out of Africa, self-powered vehicles, rugged designs, green tech, could shape the global automotive landscape for decades. So next time you think about the future of transportation, don't just look west, look south too. By the way, if you're enjoying this deep dive into the future of mobility, consider subscribing to our channel. We're always unpacking the latest in tech and innovation, and your support keeps these stories coming your way. So, what's the big takeaway? Africa's automotive revolution is real, it's happening now, and it's changing the game. From Maxwell Chikambuzo's radio-powered car to Morocco's export empire, the continent's proving that innovation knows no borders. It's a story of grit, creativity, and a future where mobility lifts everyone up. If you've enjoyed this journey, hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to stay in the loop on the breakthroughs shaping our world. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.